Yo. Welcome to this short course that I will be calling 2D Animation Fundamentals with Synfig. Now this is a small part of a larger course that I'm working on called 2D Animation Production in Synfig or with Synfig. I haven't decided how I'm going to phrase that yet, but if you are interested in animation or you want to be an animator, this is a course for you. Now, the first thing that I will be going over is something called the 12 principles of animation. Now, if you actually do a search in YouTube or in Google about the 12 principles, you will see a lot of information about the, the 12 principles. But for the sake of my videos and my course, I will be going over those um, 12 principles of animation so that you guys can learn what they are and how to use them. All right, so without further ado, let us begin. Number one, squash and stretch. It's basically as it says, making a character or object squash and stretch. So the question is, why? Well, this gives your animated objects the illusion of weight, mass, and gravity. But wait, there's more. Always keep your eyes on the volume of the object so that when the object stretches, it gets thinner, and when it squashes, it needs to get wider. Number two, anticipation. Now, this basically prepares the viewer for what is about to happen. So certain actions that when you see it, you can predict what will happen next, such as a baseball player or a cricket player dragging his hand backwards as he's about to pitch. In doing that, you can anticipate what he'll do next. Number three, staging. Basically, this is positioning your character in the scene in such a way that it brings attention to what's important. That is, if the character is a focal point, then our eyes should be drawn to the character. Number four, straight ahead and pose to pose. This refers to how you decide to draw your frames. Straight ahead would be you drawing each frame starting at frame one right to the end. Whereas pose to pose, you draw the first frame and the last frame so you know where you, you'll begin and where you'll end. Then you draw a few frames in between to help you understand where the object will be at certain points and what its pose will be at that particular point. Then you go again and draw in the rest of the frames. Number five, overlapping slash follow through. Overlapping action refers to the fact that when a character moves, various parts of their body moves at different rates. Whereas follow through is when a character comes to a stop, there are parts of the body that continue to move for a few more frames before stopping completely. Number six, slow in and slow out or ease in and ease out. This is when an object starts out slowly, then gradually builds up speed, then gradually slows down before coming to a stop. For example, a car. I must admit though that I keep forgetting whether slow out happens at the beginning and slow in happens at the end or vice versa. I don't think it matters though, as long as you understand what it is and how to do it. Number seven, arc. Arcs are everywhere, from the way you swing your arms while walking to you throwing a ball from point A to point B. When animating, utilize arcs. Number eight, secondary action. Any action that supports or emphasizes the main action is called secondary action. One thing to note though is that the secondary action shouldn't distract you from the primary action. Number nine, timing and spacing. Now, this one is self-explanatory, but timing is a very important principle as every movement your character makes and the objects that they interact with has to be timed out correctly to get the desired results. Now, spacing has to do with the, the frames in between the yeah. character or the object that you're animating. All right, so for example, in this example that we have here, we see two objects going from the left to the right, right? Now, we know that the timing, based on the timing, the timing is the same because they start off at the same time and they end at the same time. Now, the spacing is different, as you can see, in between, right? So you can see where at certain intervals, one is, is um, ahead of the, the, the other one, right? But they both get to the end at the same time. So the, the timing and spacing works together. Number 10, exaggeration. Well, since we're making cartoons, we should take the opportunity to make our characters more dynamic by adding some exaggeration. 
Exaggeration helps to make your animations more playful and fun, but try not to go overboard. Number 11. Solid Drawing This means to take into consideration that your objects are in three-dimensional space. So even if it's 2D, think about perspective, volume, lights, and shadows. Number 12. Appeal You might be thinking that it has to do with how the animation looks. Well, that's a part of it. Plus, the personality of the character, the way the character and the scenes are designed, and a whole bunch of other stuff. Simply put, try to make the character and the world that the character lives in appealing to the viewer. Thank you for watching, and I've made the file with all the examples available on my Patreon. So if you're interested, you can go and get them there. Um, so yeah, you can just, once you open the file, you can just click on anyone and you will see the examples of each of the principles. All right, so that's it for this one and I will see you in the next video.